Well, it's now to the wire. We are in the final stretch to election day. Joining me now to discuss Fort O'Connell, Matt Connolly, and Adam Goodman. Matt, let me start with you. Uh, uh, you're in the state that uh, will obviously play a major role in determining the next commander in chief. Pennsylvania, maybe a couple of weeks ago, thought to be out of reach, certainly now within striking distance. How do you see it playing out? I see Pennsylvania very much in play. Uh, I would predict, honestly, that he is going to win Pennsylvania by three points, and I'll tell you why. He's hitting a nerve with immigration, with jobs, especially from the energy sector, and he is going to take care of the vets. We've got a lot of vets who are very unhappy with the VA, and I think Trump is just, he's, he's packing the houses. And we've got to understand that this kind of energy is not for Hillary, for Hillary. And let's also not forget one thing. There's a transit strike in Philadelphia right now, and it's going to go through Tuesday. That could really affect poll workers. Yeah, I, I know. That's a sort of a wild card. But what about the, the, the experts who are saying that it's these, uh, the, the white women of Philadelphia, suburban Philadelphia, where Donald Trump cannot catch up. We know that Melania gave a speech, uh, perhaps targeting that group earlier in the week. Do you dismiss that completely? Don't dismiss it completely. They are a tougher sell because they're a little more uh, choosy when it comes to their candidate. But in the end, you know, it's funny, Hillary's numbers go up when she is not in the spotlight. When she's in the spotlight like she is now, which for the worst possible reasons, for dishonesty issues and her lack of transparency, they're going to shake their heads and say, you know what, this is what a Clinton presidency looks like. We've seen it before. We don't like it. I'm going to go with Trump. I'm going to hold my nose. He's going to win. All right, Ford, this is the mad dash. Uh, this is what we've all been waiting for. How do you see it playing out? Well, you have to understand that, first of all, Trump has to win Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio. And at that point, he only has 253 electoral votes, and he has to go shopping for 17 more. If he wins the Keystone State, and trust me, if he does, he's going to have to thread that needle tighter than a Ben Roethlisberger pass. He will become the 45th president of the United States. I don't like his chances in Pennsylvania because there's 900,000 more Democrats than there are Republicans, and there's only 1.2 million independents. So that's a very narrow uh, needle to thread. I like his chances in New Hampshire because Republicans outnumber Democrats. Democrats and a third of the voting electorate is actually independent. I like New Hampshire, Iowa, Nevada, or Colorado, and Maine too, and that gives you 270 electoral votes, my friend, and that makes Donald Trump the 45th president of the United States. So, Adam, Donald Trump uh, hit Florida, North Carolina, N Nevada, Colorado today. I think he might swing by Minnesota and Virginia tomorrow. Is that the right strategy? Minnesota and Virginia, those are two states you think he should be focused on two days from the election, or should he follow the Ford O'Connell map? <laughs> well, I'm going to give one to Ford here. I agree Thank with you. Ford. And can, I, can I offer you just the perspective from Florida, since this always seems Please to be described do. as ground zero? Adam Shapiro did a tremendous analysis earlier in the show. The one number he didn't mention. Uh, right now, that in the early voting and early and absentees, there's a 7,300-vote margin by Democrats. Uh, Four years ago, it was 177,000 edge for Democrats on election day. Uh, and that was an election four years ago that Mitt Romney lost by only 74,000 votes to President Obama. If you look at the numbers here in Florida, the numbers un and under the numbers are looking very, very positive for Donald Trump. And I can feel it on the ground here in Tampa Bay. He was here earlier. Uh, it's hard to generate momentum and enthusiasm that doesn't exist. It's much easier to channel something that I think has become a movement into votes. What about I think the, that's what you're going to say. What about the, the, the Nevada, guys? Uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm hearing things out of the Nevada that uh, over 70 percent of people have already early voted, that, uh, that they've, Clark County has been a, just a grand slam. For, for the Democrats, even that county with Reno in it. Uh, are you concerned? Because the way I look at the map, I think he's got to win Nevada, Ford. I absolutely agree with you. I'm concerned about the SEIU busing people, not only in Clark County, but also in Washoe County, where Reno is, to the polls. That could make the difference the turnout in the Clinton machine. I yeah. also like potentially Colorado to keep a lifeline open or Michigan. Right. But in those cases, black vote has to take a serious nosedive, right. just like Pennsylvania. We've got to leave it there. Love your perspective. Great.